people who get signed off uh, work with stress, often that is their last negotiating tactic when their employers are not listening to them or not wanting to negotiate with them. Whereas in the past, people would have been able to join a union or they would have been able to negotiate um, to work uh, part-time, those um, protections for workers have been eroded over many decades. And now what we're seeing is that people, when they have those problems at work, getting signed off with stress is really the only way that they can give themselves Uh a bit of breathing space. And that's something that I don't think we're recognising in this debate. Well, I mean, only because you hadn't got on yet, Zach. We're recognising it now. So so uh, some of the other safety nets have been removed by legislation. I think I can confidently say by, by unions, by, uh, by Tories, right-wing media launching sustained attacks on unions continue to do so. So the support that you might expect to find in the workplace when you are temporarily unable to fulfil your duties full-time has gone leaving you with little choice and and something about the balance of power in employers. Joe's not being in this category. Joe's employer being quite a good example of um, how employers can operate. But they we've all worked for people who, who pride themselves on being unpleasant. And th- they won't say, oh, well, why don't you just go part time for a couple of weeks? Or perhaps we could have a talk about your hours or perhaps we could help you deal with it. We could take you out of that situation that you're finding difficult and redeploy you. You'll come up against various brick walls in terms of personnel management. And then lo and behold, things get so bad, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, I'm going to have to sign you off. That's it. Because you can't go back to work in this state. Um, Absolutely. And, um, you know, so it's really a political act, this, you know, trying to get signed signed off. And, And what makes me really angry about what Rishi Sunak's doing is that he's taking that decision out of the hand of a GP who knows the patient is incentivized to help the patient and he's going to give it to healthcare professionals who work in the Department for Work and Pensions and who are not going to be incentivized to put the worker at the heart of the decisions that they're making. This is about taking away that negotiating tactic from employees so that they have to put up with whatever whatever their employer's offering. Just um, pause there. Just just pause there. Forget about the bit about negotiating tactics just repeat and i want everybody to listen to this very very carefully just repeat the bit that you just said about what happens when you take away this decision making process from doctors and give it instead to civil servants whose job really is to reduce expenditure Yeah, so your GP is an independent uh, contractor with the government. They're only incentivised to help you, the patient, and their population. It would be entirely different if you're taking that decision out of the hands of your GP and putting it into the hands of a healthcare professional that's employed by the Department of Work and Pensions. That's what this is really about. And, you know, it it makes me very angry, actually, thinking about what's going to be happening to people. Well, it makes me bloody livid. Now, you've explained it like that, and I was pretty cross already. Thank you, Doctor.